In this week's episode, David and I discuss and review the 1987 flick Uninvited, a suggestion from one of our loyal listeners. We'll begin with the reign of terror. A few murders here and there. Welcome to the Swear Wolves. I'm Brett. I'm David. David. Yes, Brett. How's it going, buddy? It's going good, man. How are you? We're in the throes of the holiday season. Yeah. It, it, Thanksgiving has passed. It's almost we are now, December now. The countdown begins to Christmas. Yep. Santa Claus is coming. He's Come coming. To town. We got to be good. For goodness sake. Because you never For know. For fuck's sake, Brett. Be good. <laughs> For fuck's sake, be good. He's fucking watching you while you're sleeping, watching you while you're pooping. So I got a bit of news. He's a pervert. What do you got? Well, I know nobody out there lets their little kids listen to this show, okay? So mm. we're going to spoil something. So if if you do let your little kids, well, first of all, you're probably a bad parent. But second of all, <laughs> you're the worst. Earmuffs. <laughs> Earmuffs this. So Santa Claus. Yeah. Doesn't exist, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's bullshit. <laughs> it's a big scam. <laughs> just, uh, just had this conversation with my daughter. Oh, how'd that go? And, it went really well. I actually, I wish I would have recorded it because me, Father I, of the parent year. of the year. Yeah. Um, because I was very, it was like, it was like taking an egg that can't crack and you just gently throw it up in the air and you catch it and it doesn't, and it doesn't break at all. And you just set it down and it's nice. That's how I, that's how I handled this. a few days later, this. a little baby bird is born. Little baby bird is born, and and she goes on, and she makes her own nest somewhere else, David. And the bird speaks and says, thank you, Brett, for catching me. <laughs> thank you, Dad, for being thank, such yes, a thank good you, father. <laughs> for being such a good father and handling this so well. Uh, no, I did. My wife couldn't have the conversation because my wife was like, this will make me too emotional. Mm. So I did it. And it was it's the right age. I mean, she's 10. Yeah, that's about right. That She should have known. She, I shouldn't even have actually had this conversation. Like with my son, my son goes, I go, what do you think about it? He goes, ah, I know it's all not real. And I was like, oh God, thank God. <laughs> thank God. He goes, I go, how did you figure it out? He goes, well, it just seems silly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just logically worked it out myself. I did all the math. I crunched the numbers. It just wasn't adding up. And I he, never he had the like, talk with my parents, by the way. We you never had it. it. No. <laughs> they, still, <laughs> they, still, <laughs> they still think you believe. My dad breaks into my house every year and puts uh, <laughs> presents around the tree. <laughs> yep. We just let him. Yep. Um <laughs> I remember playing it up, though. Like, even after I had stopped, I played it up for a couple extra years. I was like, oh. No, it'd be it'd interesting be to know. If Santa brought me these particular gifts, I'd be super, super grateful. And I'd be a really good boy, like, forever. <laughs> They're like, David, you're 17, all right? <laughs> Get over you're it. You're 25 uh, years old. Also, when are you going to move out? <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting to know, though, because your sister is only like a, a year or two younger than you. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you might be like you figured it out and you didn't tell her and you're like, well, I'll just kind of play along or whatever. But like, did she ever have the conversation? I don't think so. I don't think it ever happened with either of us. Well. Maybe your did, parents did, don't know. Did your maybe, daughter, maybe did she go went, to you or did you go to her? I went to her. Okay. Now, I didn't want to originally, but I was like, I can't have another year of hiding this fucking elf on the shelf. This fucking thing needs to stop. <laughs> it's ruining your life. <laughs> you don't understand the pain. I don't know. I'm going to put it out there for, for parents that are thinking about, well, maybe this year we'll introduce an elf on the shelf. It'll be a lot of fun. That's what you think. That's what you think right from the jump. But I'm going to tell you something. This elf doesn't ever fucking go away and you gotta fucking move this son of a bitch and you can't touch him and you gotta write notes and you gotta like put them in different poses and if you don't move them and they go oh he didn't move and then all of a sudden you fucking move them you're like i don't know what happened you gotta make up fucking stories you gotta be like fucking <laughs> whose line is riff. it anyway ryan yeah. styles improv fucking master and that shit and then then the elf goes back to Santa Claus, right? So you put the, you stuff that fucker in a box somewhere and you go, <laughs> and hope I got 11 months. <laughs> I got 11 months of not dealing with this son of a bitch. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> come Thanksgiving, your little ch child little, will be little like, little oh, remember our again. elf? You're like, oh. remember our elf? Shouldn't he be coming back now? And then it's like, fuck. Yeah, Christ. Yeah, you probably should, kid. 
over again. So I couldn't handle that anymore. So I went up there and I was just like up to her bedroom and I was like, look, I go, what do you think about fairies? And she goes, I don't know. They're cool, I guess. <laughs> I go, no. <laughs> I mean, this conversation's already not going the way I want. <laughs> I go, you're right. They are cool. But like, do you think they're real? And she's, oh, no, I said that leprechauns at first. Mm. I go, do you think leprechauns are real? And she goes, no. I go, but they're cool, right? And she's like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, kick ass leprechaun. Hell yeah. And then I was like, uh, fairies, and I went through some of them. And then I think I even brought in Bigfoot at one point in time. <laughs> <laughs> really? What are your but thoughts then on I got Sasquatch? To like, you know, I got, to the, I got to the big two, right? Mm. Which is Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. Was the Tooth Fairy like, like well, what, what about me? <laughs> tooth Fairy's long gone. Okay, good. I said, uh, what about the Easter Bunny? She was like, oh, that's real. I go, really? I go, I go, you think there's a big giant bunny who walks around shitting out candy? <laughs> <laughs> this is me being father of the year, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, no. She starts laughing. She goes, no, that doesn't sound <laughs> real at all. And I go, nah, it doesn't, does it? And I go, what about Santa Claus? And she just looked at me. And then I go, well, let's talk about it. And so then this is where I was really good because I talked about what Santa Claus means and why we all still, you know, talk about it and how like we weren't lying to her. We're just trying to share the experience that we had. And, and I said, would you'll even still get presents from Santa Claus? Yeah. Like you just need to know who paid for it. Me. <laughs> That's pretty much it too. I just want, I want the credit. <laughs> well, and that was the thing my wife and I always did with the gifts. Like all the good gifts were from us. All yeah, the shitty gifts smart. we made planting, from Santa planting Claus. Planting the seeds early. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> oh, Santa Claus, fucking terrible yeah. gift giver. Were these socks? Yeah, I'm not gonna let Santa Claus give a fucking iPad to my daughter because yeah, yeah, she's gonna I, think I Santa Claus shit. is great. My wife brought up another good point though on that because my wife was a teacher. And she would see, obviously, kids in her class, some kids would have more money than other kids. Right. And when they'd come to school, some kids would be like, Santa Claus brought me a PlayStation 4. Yeah, and they're and like, but you're kid... a little shithead, and I got fucking shoes. Yeah. I got a pair of my brother's old shoes. Just put in a box. <laughs> I and got a used with condom. A... <laughs> Saying, this is where I should have been. <laughs> this should be you. <laughs> That's so wrong. No. But she was like, I always, she said she always felt bad because there'd be kids who'd be like, but if there's this, if Santa Claus, why did Santa Claus give them a PlayStation 4 and I didn't get shit? Yeah. And I'm a better kid. Yeah. Yeah. I remember thinking that as a kid, although I always got, my parents always took really good care of us. So like, I can't complain on the present front. I always got good yeah. stuff, but I remember going to school and there'd be kids that were little shitheads yeah. that got just as good as stuff as me. And I was like, what the fuck, Santa? <laughs> Like, this guy? Really? Is that when you got the pen and the paper out and you did the math? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Crunch the numbers. First, I wrote a very angry letter. Dear Mr. Claus. <laughs> Can I call you Santa? <laughs> um, so that that happened recently. It was a lot better. Like, let me tell you something. It was like hand, handling a little precious baby bird, great. but uh I did I did a really good job. And no tears. It's wonderful. Understood all around. The only person that cried was Christina when I told her that I had the conversation. She looked like she was going to cry. Oh, that's really sad. That's all right. She's over it now. She's very thankful. Um, Are you like, hey, I want to show you a picture of Santa Claus. And it was just an empty picture frame with just your, <laughs> so she could see your face. <laughs> She's like, eh? see, David, that wouldn't give me father of the year. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be this is, this is why I don't have children. <laughs> that is a very clever way to do it though. What are we here to talk about, David? We're here to talk about movie? Mm-hmm. You picked this fucking movie, didn't you? I, I did and I didn't. Uh this was actually a suggestion from Christy, uh one of our loyal listeners. Oh Christ. She, she DM'd us uh I think on Twitter. Because uh, one of her other requested movies was called Uninvited or The Uninvited. She's like, hey, I don't want you to think like I only have watched movies called this, but there's another movie called Uninvited. <laughs> it's like every single version. Uh, did we watch the other one? The yeah, Uninvited? yeah. It was a black and white movie. That was that so, was a few years ago. It was a black and white movie? What was yeah, it, it was about? Like kind of a, it was kind of like a haunted house movie. What? Yeah. 
<laughs> you go going to the archives. Yeah, no, we we watched it and we liked it from what I remembered. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I think we'll we see if like we can it. go two to two, uh, two for two on this. Two for two. So she title. requested uninvited from 1987. Yeah. 87, 88. I don't Some, know when this fucking movie came out. Somewhere in there. I mean, I know when it came out. I have a release date, but everything I look at says 1987. And then the release date was like August 24th, 1988. Where I'm like, were you? Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know because Uninvited was made in 1987. You've told me that five times. <laughs> uh, so let's let's get, we'll get to it. So Jump thank right you, in. Christy, for the suggestion. And remember, you can suggest movies to us too. We, we always love taking suggestions. As a matter of fact, um, last week, I forgot to mention this. Uh, last week, but I'll mention it now. the The movie Black Friday was a movie that we had discussed, but somebody messaged me after we had already picked that. Some oh, one of our listeners messaged me and asked if we could watch uh, oh, Black that's Friday. Cool. Look at that! Yeah. Look at us thinking ahead. Yeah, we read their thoughts. Exactly. So uh, feel free to message us on all the socials. You'll get that at the end of this episode. So just fast forward to that if you want to know all that stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, uninvited. Release date, August 24th, 1988. David, what was the number one movie in the theater? Can we do so many 1988 movies? We do a lot. <laughs> so it's probably something we've done before. The number one song is probably Kokomo or some shit. But I'm going with uh, The Naked Gun. Did you like that movie, The Naked Gun? Uh, yeah, I didn't see it until I was older. Like when it came out, I remember all my friends at school talking about it and liking it. But yeah. I didn't see it till I was like a teenager. But yeah, I remember no. thinking it was funny. Do you like comedies like that? Like Airplane, Spoofs Naked Gun? kind of stuff? Yeah. yeah. Not as much as I used to, but as a teenager, yeah, I loved that stuff. You know what movies we're going to have to do someday is the scary movies. Yeah. Because those are like horror spoofs. Mm-hmm. They're kind of like that, right? The, the, the Wayans Brothers, or at least they were involved in the first like three of them. But spoiler alert for everybody out there, a scary movie too. I think is fucking hilarious, and it's. I think it's fucking more hilarious than the first scary. I remember movie. really liking it, but I haven't seen it in years. But yeah, we I should, quote it we all the time. Sometime, yeah, I quote it all the time. I love it. Anyway, uh, that was not the number one movie. Naked Gun was not for the number shame. One movie. Uh, I did like the Naked Gun movie, and I did see it when it came out. Uh, but uh, the number one movie was actually a movie that we've reviewed before, David. Well, shit. And yeah. it's one of your favorite. Oh, In fact, shit. you was have it, the movie poster it, right behind you, and I have the movie poster right above me. Oh, Nightmare on Elm Street 4? Yes. <laughs> uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master, was the number one film in the theater. So Uninvited was like, look, we got this. <laughs> we can release it the same weekend. <laughs> I think we can beat Freddy. <laughs> Absolutely. And we all know, Freddy was huge back in the late 80s. Um... Number one song was not Kokomo. I'll give you a hint. It was Good, not Kokomo. Because I did not pick Kokomo. I picked. But I will I will tell you something else. I mm. planted this seed earlier, and I don't know if you uh, uh, recognized it, but before we started recording, oh, no. I said something to you, and it was the title of this song. Oh, shit. Just so I could say that I told you the title before. <laughs> Damn it. Well, I'm not perceptive, so I did not pick up on anything. <laughs> and you don't listen to me. So. Fuck. Uh, I went with uh, Simply Irresistible by Robert Palmer. <laughs> yeah, remember when I told you you were you simply, me I was irresistible? simply Irresistible? <laughs> I, I do remember that. No, I don't remember because I get told it so regularly. <laughs> uh, no, that is incorrect. The number one song was Roll With It by Steve Winwood. Oh, Winford. just Winford. roll with it, baby. I think that yeah. was the number one song in one of our other episodes, too. Probably. Fucking Steve Winwood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before before we started recording, you're, you're like, I should go over my notes. Like, oh, well, we can just roll with it. You did say that. Now I do remember. <laughs> Damn it. It was right after you told me I was simply irresistible. <laughs> Let's just roll with it. I, I only speak in, now I I speak in song titles. <laughs> Uninvited was written, directed... And produced by Graydon Clark. Triple threat kind of guy. With music by Dan Slider. That's kind of a... Hey, you're a musician. You like Dan make music. Slider. Yeah. You're like, uh, oh, I'm Dan Slider. Slide the knobs on the mm-hmm. production board mixer. Mm-hmm. That's what he also calls his penis. <laughs> old Dan Slider. <laughs> Roll uh, with what it, do you baby. want to eat tonight? I don't know. Maybe a Dan Slider? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
This movie stars George Kennedy. You know, George Kennedy was in another movie. Maybe Christy just likes George Kennedy because he was in fucking Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. Uh, oh, yeah. He was the That's construction right. guy. Yeah. She's like, no, I don't like George Kennedy. Next, can you guys do the Dirty Dozen? <laughs> um, <laughs> can do. <laughs> George Kennedy is Mike Harvey. Alex Cord as Walter Graham. Clue Gulliger as Albert. I love Clue Gulliger. I do too. Uh, R.I.P. Actually, yeah. all three of those guys are dead. Um, Alex Cord just died in 2021, and Clue Gulliger just died uh, a couple, a couple months year ago. A year or two ago? Oh, is it that recent? I thought it was 2022. Yeah, it probably was. Like It was recent. Yeah, it was August. It was August of this year. Oh, wow. Yeah, very recent. Yeah, very recent. And then that Alex Cord guy, he just died last in 2021. Oh, shit. Dropping like flies. George Kennedy, he's yeah. been dead a while, but... I believe so. I believe he. I believe he died in 1986. <laughs> I'm gonna say he, he died like movie. early 2000s, like 2005 ish. Is my guess. 2016. You were way off. 2016. Oh shit. Sorry, George. Yep. That's all right. Um, who else? Who else do you want to know? Did they die? <laughs> Tony Hudson. Tony Hudson's still alive. Uh, Tony Hudson plays Rachel. Eric Larson as Martin. Claire Carey as Bobby. Now. Did you, I would say your fa- your parents, because I would venture to guess that you weren't like, oh, this is must see TV, but did your family ever watch Coach? Yeah. Coach's daughter? Oh, that's okay. I thought she looked really familiar. I was like, yeah, I've definitely she, seen this girl somewhere. Yeah. Claire Carey. Yeah. She I played Coach. Bobby. I did too. Uh, not really a show for like. 12 year olds though like when that show was on it wasn't like oh god i gotta watch coach tonight (laughs) (laughs) that's true i want to say it was like a dad show i think my dad uh, liked it and i would sometimes watch it with him that's the only reason why you'd watch half the shows that i watched is (laughs) because my parents watched them yep uh bo dremen as lance rob estes as Corey. rob estes is like a big like was a big soap opera guy oh okay uh, that's Sherry, where I know him from. Yeah, too. that's where I know him from. <laughs> Guiding Light. Sherry Shattuck as Suzanne and Michael Holden as Daryl. This movie had a runtime of 92 minutes with a budget of $200,000. Okay. However, $75,000. Did, yeah, did it go to George Kennedy and Clue Gulliger? <laughs> $75,000 of the budget went to the salaries of George Kennedy, Alex Cord, and Clue Gulliger. Makes sense. So nearly half. <laughs> of it and i don't have any box office numbers for it but hot box hot box hot box box. now hot box this is the video that i'm using i it's very hard like this movie i had never even fucking heard of this movie (laughs) before okay and i know mst3k has uh spoofed it ah okay um because well at least i know now that it has, but I had never heard of it before. So finding the VHS box proved to be it was a challenge. Not, no, not really. It took me like an extra. <laughs> it, took, it took me like an extra thirty seconds. I had to click like normally. two extra times. Yeah, but there was a bunch of them, and and having never seen the movie poster, having never seen anything, I couldn't be like, "That's the one I remember," because I didn't even know this movie existed. Right. So, but I did pick out a good one. Uh, this is the new star video release of the uninvited. Well, of uninvited. I shouldn't say the uninvited. The cover of the box uh, in the like the upper fifth, one fifth of the box, it has a, a ship, like a silhouette of a ship against a, a grayish bluish sky. Mm-hmm. And uh, it has a tagline at the top and it says, cats have nine lives. You only have one. Oh, God. He's right. <laughs> The rest of the box, the rest of the five sixths of the box, it says, uh, uh, or it has a picture of a cat, okay, with another like cat monster like thingy coming out of its mouth. Uh-huh. And at top at the top of that image, it just says, "Graydon Clark's uninvited." And I'm reading this going. Graydon Clark. Is that supposed to fucking mean something to me? Am I like, oh, Graydon like, Clark's Like John Carpenter's <laughs> the thing or whatever. Like, oh, it's a Graydon Clark film. I'm in. <laughs> that, that means a lot. So I did look up and see Graydon Clark and uh, kind of see what he else, uh, what he else, what else he is known for. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are some of the movies that he's directed. Uh, the Bad Bunch. Okay. 
black shampoo, Satan's cheerleaders. Uh, here's a movie that you're actually familiar with. Joysticks. Oh yeah. Yeah. The eighties arcade movie. Yeah. Yeah. He, he fucking directed that. Okay. So he's known for quality films. Absolutely. So when you see Graydon's <laughs> Clark uninvited, you know, you're in for a banger. Yeah. Uh, below that image, uh, there's the second tagline. They always have two on these fucking VHS. It says, you'll never look at a cat in the same way again. I don't know about that. Not entirely true. Like, (laughs) I have three cats. I look look at them all. The The dynamic of your relationship hasn't changed as a result of watching this film? Nope. That's good. But the dynamic of my relationship with one of our listeners might have. (laughs) <laughs> oh, all right let's get to the back of the box there's various still shots of the movie you know how they have like mm-hmm. on the back the of the boxes yeah all right and then the description reads as follows david get get a bucket of popcorn get ready for ready. this i'm listening let me prepare my my mm-hmm. reading voice yeah. <clears throat> genetech research lab fort lauderdale florida Armed security men dressed in radiation suits chase an escaped laboratory animal, an innocent-looking orange cat. Just as they are about to capture it, the cat transforms into a hideous mutant creature, ripping off one of the men's arms with its powerful claws and escaping into the night. So begins the saga of Uninvited, a sci-fi thriller featuring, featuring George Kennedy, Airport, Delta Force, The Dirty Dozen, Alex Cord, Jungle Warriors, and Stiletto, and Clue Gulliger, Return of the Living Dead, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. As three Wall Street criminals bent on escaping to the Cayman Islands with their latest booty. (laughs) Along for the ride on the luxury yacht are the boat's captain, Rachel, and two sexy co-eds, co-eds, Suzanne and Bobby. Amid protests from Cord and his men, they don't even call Alex Cord like his character's name. They're just calling him the actor's name. They do that with uh, Clue Gulliger as well. Amid protests from Cord and his men, the girls invite aboard three boys they've met dockside and a fluffy stray cat Suzanne has found at the marina. Soon after they head out to sea, the mutant feline begins to wreak havoc with the boat's passengers, attacking Clue Gulliger and causing him to fall overboard. Rachel wants to return to port, but Cord insists that they keep moving towards the Caymans. Reluctantly, she agrees to ignore Gulliger's death and stay on course when offered the title to the yacht as an enticement. One by one, the passengers encounter the killer cat. Bitten and poisoned by its deadly venom, Kennedy's blood boils. One of the boys has his fingers bitten off while making love to Bobby, and the two jump overboard rather than face the the same fate. Suzanne consumes food contaminated by the creature and soon succumbs to the poison. And another of the boys stalks the cat into the engine room where his misdirected gunshots puncture the yacht's hull and pierce a steam pipe, which explodes, boiling him alive. As the yacht sinks amid a violent storm at sea, only three remain. Their only hope, an approaching Coast Guard cutter. But who will survive? And days later, when a little boy and his daddy discover a sea-soaked piece of luggage on a tranquil beach, will they guess that inside lurks the uninvited? Holy shit, how big is the font <laughs> on the fucking synopsis, man? They just get this so, one beat you by beat. What'd you rate it? <laughs> they did They did the hard part for us. It's done. I read that today and I was like, what the fuck? This is the worst back of a box I've ever read in my life. If you pick this up at the video store and you're like, still rented it, you're an insane. But if you pick this up, you read it, and then you're like, I've seen that movie. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, that's the entire plot of the movie. Every death. They talked about every death. <laughs> they talked about everything. So before we started recording, David and I were like, kind of going, okay, do you have everything? Do you have everything? And David's like, I don't know. This is the first movie I watched this week, so things might be a little cloudy. I said, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> we got you covered. I got you covered. We got the box. It explains it all. Wow. That was that's the VHS box for uh That's nuts. Uninvited. 
That's like when, who wrote that? do, you remember, do you remember like when you're in elementary school? Like sometimes if you had a test, some teachers would let you like prepare a cheat sheet, but it had to be like the size of an index card or something like yeah. that. But you would write as small as humanly possible to yep. get as much on there. Like that yeah. person, like. Did came that. from that that school of thought. <laughs> like, I'm going to get it all on the box. Well, I almost don't blame the person. I blame the person who just stamped it and was yeah. like, yep, that's what we're using. There's our box. <laughs> Stupid. So with that being said, all right, some of that stuff did not happen in the movie, by the way. Yeah, I don't remember the cat ripping a guy's arm off in the no. beginning. No, I don't either. Now, it could be because the version that we're seeing might have been edited. Hmm. From from this, I don't know. Um, Except for his death is not- off camera, but it's nice to know that his arm was ripped. It was ripped off. <laughs> like, it was just yeah. an F- FYI. Yeah. Um, there's also like at the end when they say like a little boy and his daddy discover a sea soaked piece of luggage. The, oh, I don't right. remember them dis- no, discovering they just find the, the cat. The, he, and, and it's, it's just, just a little boy. A kid. Yeah. There's no dad. <laughs> He's fatherless. He's a bastard child. <laughs> the cat a bastard him. child finds a cat, and it's not even. It's it's a it's not the orange cat. It's a it's a different cat, yeah. but presumably it's been infected, because the luggage has ro- washed ashore carrying the cat Titanic style, like fucking Kate Winslet <laughs> floating on the that door. fucking scene in this movie. We'll get to that. All right. <laughs> so, the back of the box, yes, most ninety percent of what they said on the back of the box is true, and it's ninety percent of the movie. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's where all the Genetech research labs are in the world. Fucking Genetech. And That's a funny word. <laughs> gene like tech. Genital. I don't know. I pronounced it Genetech. It's probably Gene Tech. It's spelled. It's I'm spelled call it G-E-N-E. Gen- Genital Tech. Genital Tech. <laughs> I mean, bionic That's what they're dicks. They're doing research on on. This is like the first company that invented Viagra. And uh, they're like genital tech, where <laughs> dreams become reality, and reality is more than you ever want. <laughs> That's our slogan, guys. What do you think? Put it on a box. <laughs> and explain everything that it does. <laughs> explain everything. I'll just flip it over, and everything will be explained. We got Carrie over here to write it. She's all, yep, that's what I do. I got a small <laughs> index card. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, so yeah, they, it says armed security guys. Uh, the really what happens is is you got two of these genital tech uh, employees, and they're talking about this cat, and they did an X-ray of him, and they're like, something's growing There's inside something this inside cat. That cat. What could it be? Well, go get the cat. So they get this nice, beautiful orange um, cat, long-haired uh, cat, and they get it, and they they're gonna inject it with something to like kind of knock it out so they can cut it open. And this cat's like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah fuck all that shit i'm out of here <laughs> and it, it runs peace um so this is when they're like meh, meh, meh. everybody's on lockdown they press the button <laughs> yeah. sound the alarm he gets on the phone he's like it escaped it escaped the radiation <laughs> so they go uh they, they they surround the cat and they shoot it with it the, they are in like these um like radiation hazmat suit, suit looking things yeah, yeah. yeah it has met and they shoot they it with like a trank it. gun. Yep. And the cat passes out. Donk. Like, oh, but good. then like this fucking deformed mutant cat comes out of its mouth. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't read the box because when this happened, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it crawls out I, of its mouth. I, I kind of want to see who did the special effects because I'm pretty sure it was John Carl Beekler. No, it wasn't him. Damn it. Hmm. It was Jim and Debbie Bulldean. Bulldean? <laughs> oh, Jim and Deb. <laughs> uh but they it looked like a john carl beekler like cat mouth opening up not that i disliked the cat actually the effect i'm not saying that oh i'm just saying it looked like one of his puppets it did yeah like a ghoulie <laughs> it was kind of ghoulie-ish <laughs> it was like a cat ghoulie <laughs> but poor cat. it comes it's out got of another this... cat living inside its mouth yeah and it's all slimy in it but it's like it comes out small and it goes back in small, but then it's like big when it's out. It, it the continuity of this it was demon very cat. weird. Yeah, there's people out there that collect movie props. I wonder if anybody has Someone's the fucking cat, cat from. <laughs> <laughs> Good Sean Clark on the phone. Do you have this cat? <laughs> <Got> the cat. <laughs> Which cat? The inner or the outer cat? Yeah, I think I would rather have the inner. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 
But that cat, uh, uh, the cat it, comes out. Yeah, and, and it kills presumably the guy. Rips off one of its arms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then it runs away. <laughs> yeah, it shimmies through the air ducts. I think like John well, McClane. Well, style yeah. It, then the cat crawls back inside the mouth of the 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 mutant cat crawls back inside the mouth of the regular cat. Yeah, and it's it like it's a vessel. Away. Yep. All right. So now that's happening. Now we meet um, who the back of the box just referred to as his real name, Alex Cord, um, but his, he plays the character of Walter Graham, and he's like this Wall Street tycoon. We'll find out later from one of the characters that he's like. He's like one of the he's richest like just, men in the world or something like yeah. that. And he's like, he's like, he's like, um, who's that guy? Michael Douglas in, in that movie, Wall, Wall Street. Street. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's like, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm rich and I'm going to be more rich. And he picks up, uh, there's these two girls, uh, the sexy co-eds, uh, <laughs> Suzanne and Bobby. <clears throat> Suzanne and Bobby that come into this hotel and they don't have it's spring break. Yeah, they they can't find a room. No. What's your face is wearing a Spuds McKenzie shirt? I was like, oh shit, I forgot about that little dog. Dude, Spuds McKenzie was big for like <laughs> he two was. seconds. He was. I remember yeah. there was a rumor when, a when Spuds Mc, when Spuds McKenzie stopped being a thing for Bud Light. There was a rumor uh that I remember hearing that he went crazy and like bit his owner's face off. <laughs> the dog fucking lost yeah, because it was like a pit bull and he I'm was not like, popular no. anymore <laughs> <laughs> the dog went crazy like human think that, flesh i don't think that's true no it sounds made up <clears throat> but it's, it's fun to think he, about yeah it is it's like there was uh, another Mikey. dog that lived inside the dog that popped out and ripped <laughs> his owner's face off <laughs> damnedest thing oh spuds mckenzie uh, but, uh that walter guy um <clears throat> he invites them to a party like he spots them in the lobby or something like that he's like hey i think uh I he's think like they're can, with me yeah I, I think we can figure something out ladies and at first they're kind of like well you're kind of a creepy older guy and he's like i have a yacht <laughs> and party they're like on, oh you you're rich my yacht? but what does that say about okay first of all i know it's the 80s but what does it say about these two girls yeah, like pretty, with the writer shallow. Grace, Graydon Clark's like, girls, all they want is money. Am I right, guys? And everybody's like, Graydon, you're kind of a fucking dick because you're writing movies where chicks are just going to drop trial for every guy that they see. Yeah. Meanwhile, Graydon Clark has never gotten pussy since pussy had him. <laughs> this fucking guy. Mm. It, it, the guy who directed Joysticks is going to tell us. <laughs> if you ever never seen the movie Joysticks, don't. But you can in the first five minutes you'll be like, "Yep, this guy's a fucking pervert, pervert douchebag." <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. So these girls they go on this yacht. They're gonna party with this guy. Yeah, they go out to dinner with him. But then we got George Kennedy and Clue Gulliger come, and they're like, "Hey, we got to go meet up with this guy." So they strong arm this other guy, this the fourth guy, and they're like. <clears throat> You're going to tell the SEC. At first, I thought they were talking about college sports. <laughs> <laughs> the SEC. <laughs> I mean, like for a brief second, I was like, do they bet on sports? Is that how they got money? Yeah. And then I, was, I go, are they trying to rig games? And then I was like, oh, no, it's a, it's a big elaborate point shaving scheme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was like a ref. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah uh, at first, they're trying to like buy this guy off. They're like, ah, oh, show him the suitcase with all the hundreds in it. This could be yours. <laughs> He's like, oh, I ain't gonna squeal. Dollars. Cold hard cash. And they're like, yeah, well, no, I'll, I'll never squeal. I'll never squeal. But Walter's not having any of it. He's like, just kill him. <laughs> so they drown the guy. <laughs> they drown him in a hot tub on the yacht. And then Clue Gulliger like, has a heart attack while he's <laughs> killing the guy. <laughs> it gets all worked up. Um, so that happens. Meanwhile, uh, there's these two douchebags. Uh, that's Lance and Corey, right? So, yeah, yeah, Lance and Corey. Well, there's a few. And Lance, there's, a, there's three of them, I think. There is three of them, but we don't see the third one yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Lance and Corey are just kind of hanging out, and Lance is like a uh, jock, I guess. We find out later he's got like a wrestling scholarship. This this dude doesn't have a wrestling scholarship. It, absolutely but. not. Yeah, I thought the same thing. They're like jock. I was like, okay, of what? Sure, buddy. Yeah, esports. Um, and then uh, Corey which is the Rob Estes character. And I already said, and I mentioned this earlier because it'll kind of paint the picture. He's like a, a, a soap opera guy, actor. So mm-hmm. picture a typical soap opera actor from the 80s, and that's this guy. Yeah, it's really And he's like, oh, oh, 
Walter Graham, huh? I'm going to get in good with Walter Graham. He's the kind of guy like Zach Morris wanted to be. Yeah, he's very yuppie <laughs> and like wants, only cares about money. Total yep. douchebag guy. Yep. Uh, don't worry. He's the guy who shoots the boats, boats hull and gets burned. <laughs> <laughs> gets his face melted off. <laughs> and then just cast off the side of the boat. Yeah, just um, pitch him over the side. <laughs> <laughs> he's dead. Throw him. That's what they do to um, everybody. Everybody gets a burial at sea in this movie. Yep. Yep. It's like, guys, we're just in the Caribbean. I can see land yeah, right just there. A, just put a blanket over him and give him a proper burial uh, for his family <laughs> when you get back. Like, nope, pitch him over the side. Done with his ass. I'm the captain. We do it by my rules. <laughs> we're carrying too much weight. <laughs> Maritime law. My friend, maritime law. They're like, I'm the, the captain, maritime law. I'm the captain. I can do anything. You want to get married? I'll marry you right now. <laughs> what, want to die? I'll throw you off the side of the boat. What else? <laughs> All right, me, Rachel. Calm like, down. Yeah, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where were we? Uh, I don't remember. The, the oh, douche, the douchebag. Uh, so they meet, they meet Suzanne and Bobby, who immediately invite them onto this boat with them. Like, okay. oh, we're about to go on this yacht with this rich guy. You should come. <laughs> like, okay right. i don't i don't necessarily have a problem with that I'll, I'll tell a little story about that in a second but what i have the biggest problem with is all the previous night when they killed this dude this walter guy was like we're gonna have this big party on this yacht we're gonna have this big party he invites the girls big party it starts at midnight big party my ass Boom. big party my ass it flash forwards to the next afternoon we didn't even get to see the party yeah there was no party <laughs> yeah i thought that was weird too at first i thought it was an error i was like why is it daytime now yeah like, what happened to the yacht party yeah. So uh, the girls are like, we partied with this guy, Walter, last night. You guys should uh, come hang out with us. I mean, instantly after meeting them. The story I had about this was when I lived out in L.A., I didn't know anybody. Like, I moved out there. This is a trend in my life, like every 20 years. But I moved out there uh, and didn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. And I made friends and stuff like that. And I would go to these parties. And then I wouldn't know anybody at parties but uh, besides my friends. But they'd be out talking to other people. And you just start talking to people, right? And uh, it's happened twice. But I just met people and they're like, hey, do you want to go hang out with us? We're going to go to this party now. And I was like, all right. And I okay. just get in a car with them and just go. I was young and dumb. No, I didn't get and, and I get even in this movie, I just thought it was weird that you would invite somebody uh, to someone else's like property, basically. But I also think that part that's of it happened was to me. Well, I think it was also a safety thing, too. Like, I, I'm going to go out on a boat with this guy that I just met. Like, it'd be nice to have a, a little bit of extra protection. Like, younger people that will that are I'm more attracted to. But I will say this. This uh, uh, Graydon Clark wrote these, wrote these gr female characters as such fucking bimbos. Oh, yeah. That they immediately, like, upon seeing them, this Bobby girl, like, takes her hand and puts it, like, basically on Lance's dick. And it's like, you should come on this boat. Of course, he's going to say yes, but that doesn't happen in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not how it works. And if that does happen, my life uh, is, path has been very different. My, my experience, <laughs> that has never happened. Yeah, by the way, all those people who invited me to parties, they never once put their hand on my dick. No, yeah. <laughs> back, yeah, back, random back. hot girls never just come up and no. grab my junk. Mm -hmm. Nope, not, not at happened. all. Oh, um, before this, we should also say that uh, that cat that escaped, uh, it, it makes its way to uh, to uh florida via yeah. a pickup truck well, it's in, no it's in no it's in fort lauderdale <laughs> or whatever it all takes place in fort lauderdale but yes it does get in a pickup truck <laughs> okay so there's this other there's this scene with david is talking about there's this guy he's like a mechanic at a gas station and he the cat uh this orange cat is there and he's like feeding the cat and he's like oh kitty 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 yeah no no <laughs> Anyway, a guy comes up and he's like, hey, man, you got change for a dollar? And uh, the dude's like, yeah, let me go check the register. The d guy who's asking for change proceeds to punch the dude in the stomach and like beat him, <laughs> grab his keys and go rob the register and then get back in his pickup truck where his like, I guess, accomplice associate yeah. accomplice is sitting next to him. And uh, the cat's like, fuck you. And the cat jumps into the back of the pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the cat um, doesn't jump into the pickup truck. Like, it does, but did you see the hands of somebody clearly just, just kind of tossing the cat into the truck? <laughs> I did not oh, see that. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
I was probably looking away at that moment, but yes, I, I do believe Much it. like how if somebody would gently toss an egg to not break it. Like <laughs> That's how they handled this cat. It goes, whoop, into the truck you go. And then the cat, the <laughs> while they're driving down the road, busts through the back window of the truck and just starts mauling these dudes. Mutant cat. The mutant yeah, cat yeah, yeah. comes out, comes of, the out of the mouth. And then the truck like goes off a cliff and crashes. Yep. <laughs> it's like, do you remember that on Saturday Night Live, Toonces, the driving cat, the cat who could drive a car? <laughs> no. It sounds like the best thing there was ever. This, there was this uh, show that would come on. It was like, Toons is the driving cat, the cat who could drive a car. He <laughs> drives around all over the town. He's Toons is the driving cat. <laughs> so in this episode, and all, they all take place in a car, right? And it's like Phil Hartman and Jan Hooks and, and Toons is driving. And they're like, oh, Toons is. And he drives. But then Toons is always gets in a wreck and crashes <laughs> the car over the side and the car blows up. <laughs> <laughs> that's great i'm gonna totally watch that now yeah look that up but yes that's what that reminded me of it's mm-hmm. like the cat just gets in there and they and they proceed to rack okay so now we're back at the boat and uh the cat is roaming around town looking for more victims i don't know what the cat's doing i wasn't really sure if the cat itself was bad or if it was just the thing inside of him yeah i think it was just the thing inside it okay i guess i don't know anyway so uh, Suzanne, one of the girls, she finds the cat and she's like, oh, wait, I already said this in the back of the, <laughs> box, the box. Hot box synopsis, but she's like, oh, I want to take him on board. And then a third guy comes. This is Daryl. Is that who that is? Uh, I can't remember all the guy's names. Or is it Mar- uh, Martin? Oh, Martin. Yeah. Martin's the smart guy, right? Yeah. Martin. And he's the third friend. So you got a jock, a preppy. And a nerd. Yeah. And of course, of course these three do. guys hang out, right? They're the best, best friends. friends. They have so yep. much in common. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, they all love chicks grabbing their junk. And, you know, if there's one thing that we can that all unites. agree on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is anytime someone grabs your junk, it's probably a good thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it's wanted. When it's yes. wanted. Um. They all go onto the boat, and uh, this Walter guy's like, "All right, let's pump the brakes yeah, here." What a the hell's bit, guys. going on here? <laughs> you all I'm have... supposed to be fucking these chicks, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not you. <laughs> and uh, the chicks are like, "Oh, but no, we need we need to go." Well, then Clue Gulliger comes back on board. He's like, "The SEC is after us. They're gonna get us. They're on their way. We gotta get we gotta go. out of here. Floor it." And the and captain so, uh, of the ship is like, "We can't go anywhere. I don't even have a crew." And then one of the <gasps> girls, I, I got an idea. <laughs> These boys will be your crew. Yeah. And the boys are like, sure, we'll be your crew. And because as Zach Morris wants to like pick Walter's brain because he wants to be rich, <laughs> Lance just wants to get his dick grabbed more. And then uh, I don't know what Martin's deal is. He's just like, I'm here for a science experiment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they go out and, and Walter's like, whatever. Just stay out of my hair and I don't cock block me. <laughs> <laughs> and so they go out at sea and then they start partying. There's a dance sequence that's pretty fun. Like an eighties dance party. <laughs> <laughs> it underneath this yacht. Dude, there's some weird shit already going on in this movie. Like uh Clue Gulliger has the biggest fake teeth I've ever seen. Like, why did they do that? Why has he got these giant fucking teeth? I don't know, but I read um, in the... Oh, wait. I can do a little... Oh, just facts. Just facts. Just facts, man. Clue Gulliger's son, not John Gulliger, the one who directed Feast, but his other son, Tom, I believe, um, is the one who made those prosthetic teeth for him. Oh, nice. They looked, I don't ridic- know why. They looked ridiculous. <laughs> they were, it looked like... what uh, Everybody knows those are fake, but they're he's got like buck teeth. He's all... Oh. Yeah, um, it's it's like those hillbilly teeth, like you yeah, know, like it's the <laughs> Billy Bob Halloween store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was that was weird. And then also around this time, I started to notice, and then I couldn't not notice it. Uh, the cat never stops meowing. Like every time they show the cat's like meow, 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 and it's just meow effects. The cat's mouth never moves. It's just and added it's the in same post. meow. Yes, it's the same meow. Um, and. Every time Luke. we see the cat, there's also, uh, you know, the musical instruments, uh, the water phone. It's in like mm-hmm. lots of horror type movies. It's like the kind of sound. Is it uh, like a slide whistle? 
No, you'd know it if you heard it, but it ha- it's nonstop in this movie. And like every time we see the cat, that sound effect happens. And it, 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 it annoyed the shit out of me. Well, I'm going to I'm going to tell you something. This Dan Slider and his fucking music and score fucking water was phone. one of the worst scores I've ever heard in a fucking <laughs> music movie. It's really bad. Movie. It's just the same and the original songs. Again. The original songs were awful. I don't even remember them. And I just saw this. <laughs> um, all right. So they get out on the boat. Uh, they're partying. Uh, Walter comes down. And he's like, enough partying. You are. You're, uh, George Kennedy is like, you're the cook. You're the maid. You're the mm-hmm. fucking bellhop. Whatever. He that gives them all roles. They're like, fine. So they start cooking and everything. And he cooks this fucking fancy spread. Like, for just being some schlub. Yeah. He's like, oh. Uh, fancy feast. Cook. Yeah. Clue Gulliger, uh, the, they're, they're all partying. I guess, I don't know. Sometimes it jumps, and all of a sudden, like, Walter's so pissed off at the guys. He's like, fuck you, you're cock blocking yeah. me. And the ne- next it, time we see him, he's like all buddy-buddy with him. Yeah, and George Kennedy's char- character is also like that. He's like, ah, I hate these punks. I hate punks. Yeah. He's real grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> he's grumpy the entire time uh rachel who is the ship's captain her and uh the nerd they're like kind of like kind of hitting it off hitting it off but anyway she's like oh you clue gulliger you steer the boat for a while uh, i'm yeah, gonna go down not, and party you're not wasted <laughs> so he starts steering the boat and uh he steers him off course of course yeah and he's yeah he keeps and he's drinking more so he's getting more and more drunk so she goes up and she's like, "Oh, we're completely off course. I don't know where we are." Okay, we don't have cell. They don't have cell phones or computers back then. So she's got to like get the fucking instruments get out. The charts. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows where they are? So he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go get some more alcohol that I have stashed away in this thing." So he opens up this chest and the cat's there. And then the mutant cat comes out and starts scratching him, and he falls overboard. Yeah, and I like that he spits wine at the cat, <laughs> like right in the cat's <laughs> face. He's like, fuck you. And then he like busts a bottle like, oh, I'll cut you, man. Like he's going to fight the cat with like a broken yeah. glass bottle. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, he, he falls. Man overboard. Man overboard. Uh, they discover that he's missing the next day. And, um, yeah, and they find Rachel's blood. like, yeah, Rachel's like, we got to go back and go look for him. Oh, and, and Rachel like, says something funny. And I think she says it twice. She's like, I think he fell overboard. <laughs> like not overboard, like overboard. No. Yeah, because he was overboard with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was too at this point. Uh, uh, and we find out he couldn't swim because, of course, he couldn't swim. Well, well that's, Walter, what the, that's what the guys say. Yeah, Walter's yeah, like, uh, he couldn't swim. Up. He wasn't He's, a good swimmer. So yeah, we don't she wants to go, to, like, back, go back and look for him. He's like, no, no, no need. He drowned. He's dead. Open and shut case. And, and, and then he tells Rachel, he's like, look, here's the papers. Here's the fucking pink slip for this boat. If you get me to the Cayman Islands by uh, my deadline... I will give you this boat. She's like, okay. And the boat was actually her father's boat. Yeah. But her father's dead. And Walter got the boat from the dead. Yeah, because she couldn't afford it. And so he's like, she's like, all right. Again, another case where it's like, money? Yeah. Or the right yeah, thing sure. to do. She's like, but I am going to note this in my journal. <laughs> <laughs> right, a very strongly worded letter. Later on, she does make a, 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 a logical choice or a moral choice. But yeah, yeah not here. Not here. <laughs> but something um, else funny that happens here that I was like, what? Is that Martin character. He uh, he sees the blood from uh-huh. Albert's fall or whatever. And I think, doesn't he find like a piece of torn clothing? Yeah. has blood like, on it. And he's like, hmm. I better analyze this blood. He's like, <laughs> yeah. Why? Yep. Because he wants <laughs> to know what happened. Nobody Nobody just thinks that the guy was drunk and hit his head and fell overboard. Like I would or any logical person. But he's like something's weird about this blood and he goes to rachel and he's like they call me macgyver back in college so do you have one of those fucking what are they called i don't know what they're even called called. but you know like what i'm talking about like picture in your head like a ship captain's instrument from like the 1800s where it's like this not a telescope but it's a a pair yeah and it's got like a protractor attached to a telescope with a protractor attached to (laughs) it it looks like that he's like He's like, you got one of those? And she's like, yeah, I just so happen to have one. And you he's got a like, magnifying also. glass? <laughs> she's like, I got to right look here. at my dick. <laughs> and, and then he's like, he keeps asking her for stuff. And I'm like, well, do you want her just to fucking do it? <laughs> he's like. <laughs> yeah, he's like, give me a little drop of water. Yeah. He's like, you got any water? She's like, yeah, water. Drop of water. Blah, blah, blah. And he looks uh, at it. He's like, uh. this is amazing. 
So he fashions himself a microscope. <laughs> it's like you're yeah. in your asshole. He's like, oh, his his blood cell count was was very high. <laughs> yeah, this is this is outrageous. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? And why are you looking at his blood? <laughs> what was he expecting to see? Well, Martin is a a scientist. Yeah, he's very he's studying. Yeah, he's very intelligent. It just didn't make any sense. Like, why why are you doing this? He wants to work for genital research company. <laughs> it's a, the genital work company. <laughs> what are they called? I think we need a better name, guys. No, we're the genital work company. <laughs> uh, I don't think that works. <laughs> Um, um, that uh, Graham guy. Oh yeah, uh, he starts uh, Walter Graham. He starts getting real uh, handsy with that Bobby mm. girl. Yeah, uh, and Lance handsy, more like rapey. Yeah, he gets really rapey, and Lance comes in. He's like, "Fuck you, dude!" And he like starts like I don't know, <laughs> punching him or whatever. They start fighting. Well, then George Kennedy comes <laughs> goes, in and pulls out a alone. <laughs> <laughs> and they have the shittiest fight I've ever seen. George Kennedy comes in, pulls out his fucking, fucking nine gun. and starts taking motherfuckers down. <laughs> fucking pointed sideways. <laughs> well, he might as well have been pointing it sideways because he has the shittiest aim in the world He's and he terrible. just like grazes Lance's arm. But Lance goes down like a fucking sack of potatoes. Meanwhile, uh, the cat comes in and the mutant cat comes out of the cat and attacks George Kennedy. Fucking rips his Achilles. Yeah. <laughs> He like bites his fucking ankle like Fred Gwynn style and yeah, yeah. Like, rips it off. Dude, that would hurt so bad. Mm. Oh, that'd be that'd be the worst. To get your Achilles just sliced. Mm. No, thank you. Your muscle would just snap up inside of you because it's like hold it's like a rubber band holding your calf muscle. Uh, yeah, no thanks. That would just snap up inside of you. My dad told me a story. My stepdad, well, my ex stepdad. Listen, I've had a lot of dads in my life, <laughs> <clears throat> but all um, I ever wanted was a father. All I ever wanted was a sugar daddy. <laughs> anyway, um, my ex stepdad told me a story when he was a kid. He was riding his bikes uh, with his friends, and they were like uh, another like friend that they didn't mm. like showed up, and they were like fuck this guy. So they split up, and they were all gonna meet back on like the other side of the high school. So he went right, another kid went left, and another kid went like straight. And the other kid was going straight and his brakes all of a sudden didn't work. And he was coming uh, across a door and he put his hand out <clears throat> and uh, his hand went through the glass and sliced his tendons and his uh. arm just kind of rolled up inside of itself, uh. like <laughs> snapped up. I don't like it. No, I don't like it. Mm. He lived. Oh, that's good. But, he was but I said, same. my dad, I said, uh, well, what what did you do? He goes, I didn't even know. He goes, I was waiting there for the other boys to show up, and they never did. <laughs> I just went home. <clears throat> I'm like, maybe you were the one they were ditching. <clears throat> George Kennedy gets bit. The cat goes running away. Bobby's like, I saw this weird looking fucking cat. It looked really creepy looking. And... um Walter is like, oh, I don't know what happened. But we got to keep going. Let, we got to go to the Caymans. I'm like, oh, yeah, we need a we radio for help. He's like, nope, we're not doing that. He shoots the radio. He's like, nope, nobody's using this radio. Yeah, he goes, he goes batshit insane. Yeah, he's like, get George, me to the Caymans. George Kennedy, his blood's starting to boil. Like, <laughs> literally, like, bubbling up yeah, inside like of his body. Uh, Nerd Boy, I think, uh, <laughs> it, yeah, checks Martin. his blood. He's like, let me just check this sample. I think this cat might be venomous. Yeah, he thinks he's got some kind of disease that he's spreading to them uh, that if he bites them, uh, he will transfer it if they get his blood on or something like that. Uh, George Kennedy dies. Yep, they toss him toss him over the side. It's the only yep. way. Maritime law! <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, at this point, the boat's not working. I don't know. Yeah, because ever... the cat has the cat has destroyed it. The cat <laughs> went into the room and starts like he pulls all the wires cords. and shit. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> the cat is fucking super smart. <laughs> um, so uh, Martin and Rachel are trying to fix the. They're trying boat. to fix a, a boat. Uh, Lance, his arm is all like numb and shit because he got shot in the arm, and so he's just kind of laying there, and his arm is underneath the covers. And Bobby comes up, and she's like, "Hey." I know your arm doesn't work, but does your third leg? And she's like talking out his fucking <laughs> he's taffy like, nope. and he's 
<laughs> he's like, he's like, all right, baby. And he's like, yeah, my arm's just a little bit numb. I can't really feel it or anything. And then like they pull off the covers and they look and the fucking cat mutant cats there gnawing off his fucking fingers. <laughs> he's what? like, ah, my fingers. <laughs> Oh, and he's like running because he freaks out and you can clearly see he's got his fingers like folded down. Yeah. Not even good folded down. Like yeah. he doesn't have them folded down like, oh my gosh, it's like this. He has it like folded down like this. Right. Like, like, yeah, it looks I'm like sure David, but yeah. <laughs> like you could see it. Yeah. And uh, he's like, I'm infected. I'm going to die. You heard oh, what fuck. Mark said, that fucking nerd. I'm going to die. And Bobby's I've got, like, po- no, I've we'll got get- poison in my blood. I've got yeah. poison in my blood. I think he keeps saying it over and over again. <laughs> yeah. And Bobby's like, no, we'll get through this, baby. I'm like, you just met him like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I'd be like, no, you got a fucking nasty ass hand. That ain't going to work. I'm very shallow. <laughs> that cat was just gnawing on your hand. So she's like, we'll, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. They go to the side of the boat. And Corey's like, what's going on, bro? Uh, don't do anything rash. And he's like, fuck you guys. And he jumps over. Bobby jumps over with him. Well, she like kind of falls over, I think. I guess. I don't know. Her, her fall was weird looking. <laughs> and then neither one of them. Apparently, they're both made out of lead. Because <laughs> neither one of them <laughs> come and back And they only up. jumped. It wasn't like they jumped off a giant like cruise ship and they were you know, 50, 100 feet in the air. Like They're 10 feet above water. Yep. Like, and they both was, sunk so it's like, to the I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> he wouldn't die but he does because yeah he sinks like a fucking bag of rocks yep both of them uh, drown Mart, uh, Martin and uh, Corey go swimming looking for him and the only thing I noticed in this the guy kept his socks on <laughs> when he jumped in the water and his sock got really long because it was wet yeah <laughs> it was flopping <laughs> that's the only thing I noticed <laughs> I couldn't stop watching the sock flop around <laughs> It makes no sense. Like, how did they instantly drown? What? Yeah, and what did they think they were gonna do? Here, let me jump in the ocean and look for them. What? <laughs> the ocean's deep. Oh, and by the way, the boat isn't moving either, so it's not like they're cruising at a hundred right, miles right, an right, hour. Right. They ju- jumped off. It's <laughs> yeah, like it was, they just jumped off. Yep, it was they, at a full yep, stop. They jumped ten feet to their death. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, oh, fuck. So, so then they Cor- die. So- yeah. Uh, so Corey and Graham at this point have kind of teamed up because Corey's very shallow. And Graham yeah. like off- gave him a Rolex and kind of insinuates like, hey, you help me out. Like, I'll, I'll I got take this briefcase it. I'll take with a million dollars in it. Yeah. We can. I'll, I'll give you some of it or whatever. And he's like even gives him a strap of hundreds, I think, at one point. Yeah. Uh, Corey's like, cool. But they're gonna, so they're going to now look for the cat. So they're setting out like poison traps, like cat poison food. Cat food. Or, yeah. To try to lure Mean, it out. Meanwhile, the cat has gotten into the regular human food. And contaminated it. And contaminated all of it. And so Martin's like, we can't eat any of this. We can only eat like what the cat hasn't touched. Yeah, which isn't and much. They're now, <laughs> and now they're starving. And they're dying of... Um, they, they haven't eaten in like 14 minutes. Yes, David. and so, yeah, Suzanne's freaking out. <laughs> she, she's starving to death. And uh, to be fair, she was nothing... probably starving herself to death before uh, they ran out of food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like, I need half an olive. <laughs> yeah, please, it's part someone, of my diet. I need an ice cube really bad. <laughs> um, yeah, they've only been out at sea for like two days at this point. And I was like, how big is the Caribbean? It's not that big, right? I would think eventually you'd see another ship or something. Yeah. But no, they're not very lucky. Fort Lauderdale to the Cayman Islands, it can't take that long. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. It's like, I don't know how many miles, but let's say it's like 600 miles away. I don't know how fast yachts travel, but they should have been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, I guess Clue Gulliger did reroute them. So That's true. They could be anywhere. My son brought up a good point. He goes, maybe they're in the Bermuda Triangle. And then we got in a whole conversation about how the Bermuda Triangle, like I, when I was a kid, I thought the Bermuda Triangle was going to kill me. And uh, I was very worried about it. I was it. very worried about it as well. As well. <laughs> and then I realized as I got older, obviously, that the Bermuda Triangle is bullshit. And how many people have been lost in the Bermuda Triangle in the last, I don't know, 30 years? Zero. <laughs> Zero people have been lost in that Bermuda Triangle. And it's because we can track people now. And people know where they're going yeah. and they're not just crashing their boat. <laughs> I remember as a kid, my parents uh, like went out with like friends or something out on their boat. 
This is before we had a boat. And I remember being terrified as a kid. I was like, my mom and dad, like, they're going to go out. They're going to get lost in the Bermuda Triangle. Like, <laughs> apparently I didn't understand geography or where Bermuda was, but I was very concerned that my parents were going to get lost in the Bermuda Triangle or the, the boat was going to sink. Yeah. Not hey, realizing that a- at a lake, if the boat sinks, you just swim. To yeah, shore. it's not like in the movies where yeah um, you just swim a couple hundred yards and you're good. <laughs> uh, here's here's another thing that fa- always fascinates me, and even to this day, it's like where's Bermuda? Bermuda's like in the Atlantic Ocean. Mm-hmm. It's not like underneath Florida, like by like Jamaica and you know all those places. It's like off the coast of North <laughs> Carolina. It's east. <laughs> yeah, it's like. It's like weird, like that's, and that's like a trop. I don't know. Maybe it is a good place to go. I've never vacationed there before, but yeah, it doesn't, stay on the map, when you look at a map, it doesn't look like it's appealing. It's like there's an island in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> anyway. I'm not going. Us in geography, David. Am I right? <laughs> that's right. Okay, Eventually so, that cat does pop out, like while they're, they're looking. And yeah. this, uh, where is where, what's his face? Is it Corey? Yeah. He's got the gun. Yeah, he starts shooting at it. Yeah, he misses pretty badly and uh, <laughs> melts his own he, face off. He melts his own face off, but not before he puts a hole in the boat, so the boat's going to sink. Yeah, you fool. But he's dead, so they wrap him up and toss him off the side. <laughs> That's what you got to do. Uh, Suzanne finds the stash of food, and she's like, fuck this. I know they said, well, you're not supposed to eat it, but I'm going to try. And so she tries to eat it, and she's like, oh, it's she's fine. Just like a piece of bread. Yep. She's like, it's great. She sees the cat and she's like, don't hurt me, cat. Don't hurt me, cat. Well, meanwhile, then her blood starts boiling because she ate the contaminated food. Yeah, I'm just like, ah, fuck. She fucking dies. Um, Yeah, her vein like pops. It like, it's, it just pops open. <laughs> um, A storm starts happening. The yacht starts sinking. <laughs> Dude, the yacht uh, during the storm scene. I love yeah. it because it's clearly a toy boat. Yeah. In like a, in a fucking, swimming pool or something. Yep. yep. <laughs> It looks so fake. All right. So oh, awesome. then it's it's at this point, after the boat's not been working for days, they're hungry, they're starving, all this other kind of stuff, right? It's at this point that they're like, hmm, maybe we should use that dinghy there. It's like, well, motherfucker, that's what it's there for. Get in that, row that to shore or something. Yeah. I thought that too. I was like, hey, you want to get away from that killer cat? There's a lifeboat right there. Just get in it. Yeah. Problem solved. Um, they, uh, go to get in the lifeboat, uh, this, uh, Walter Graham, he's like, I got to go get the money. Yeah. I need my suitcases. So he goes to get his suitcases full of a uh, hundred dollar bills and the cat attacks him and fucking claws his face off. <laughs> yep, he's dead. He has, he has kind of a shit death too, where he just kind of like rolls over. He's just like, Argh! yeah, he did. Then he's dead. <laughs> yeah, Cause one of the, uh, one of the other guys, um, Martin goes back for him. Cause he's like, Hey, the guy's a shithead, but like we can't leave without him. So he goes yeah, he's back, a good guy. and yeah, he finds him. Uh, finds him just floating there, <laughs> dead. Uh, Rachel and Martin. So Rachel and Martin told Walter, "We can't use that lifeboat. We can't use that lifeboat. It's just not logical." And then Martin di- or Walter dies. Excuse me. And uh, then Rachel and Martin are like, "All right, let's get in the lifeboat." Yep. <laughs> you fucking assholes. <laughs> so they get, they get it in just the- in the nick of time, just as that toy boat is sinking into the pool. Uh, yep. they manage to row away. And the cat follows them. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn cat. So, uh, uh, before oh, the they cat... find the, they find the briefcase. Cause at this point they don't know what's in the briefcase either. And like, they open it up and like, Oh my God, there's like enough money in here for you to buy the, buy a new boat. And I can start like a science lab. Like yeah, gen- oh. genital warts. <laughs> genital Ink. warts. It's a great name. <laughs> I'm set on it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the, the cat fucking pops up. Like, the cat oh! pops up out of nowhere and it's the mutant cat and it's like oh so martin's like fighting with this fucking cat and then he throws it off to the side and the cat's like blah, 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 and sinks and they're like oh, oh thank god thank ah! god and then <laughs> and then the girl the girl goes well good thing that's over and then martin goes it's not over yet ah! <laughs> can't stick fight it again and they toss it and they're like as long as that as long as we're the only thing that's floating that cat's going to keep coming back to us because it's looking for safety so they're like well we got to toss the briefcase and then the girl thinks 
before he tosses it. She's like, why don't you dump the money in this yeah, other maybe thing? Maybe we keep the money. <laughs> and he's like, good idea. So he dumps the briefcase. And then we get this shot of this cat on this fucking briefcase. <laughs> And it's like, if you've ever seen a wet fucking cat, this is exactly what they look like. It's all pissed <laughs> off at the world. And it's like holding on to this briefcase and it's just like, yeah, it's like you assholes. <laughs> <laughs> so they get to shore. They get found by like, I don't know, like some Jamaicans or something. And, uh, or maybe it's like. It's the they, Cayman they, Islands. I think they made Cayman, it Cayman Islands. Yeah. Which is wherever that is, and they uh, go to that shore, and the like the Cayman Islands National Guard finds them. And this guy's talking to him. He's like, "Well, good thing we found you." And I understand your story about this fucking weird cat and all <laughs> those people like a that bunch died. Of bullshit. Sounds like a bunch of bullshit. But you're free to go because this is the Cayman Islands. Yeah, party. everything's legal. <laughs> And they're like, all right, cool. And and the whole time, there's kind of this bit going on. That the whole time, like the 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 where they put the money in that like duffel bag is sitting right there. And the guy, the Coast Guard guy, grabs it and he's like holding it. And Martin's like, huh? Uh, uh, uh. Can I have my bag, sir? They finally get it and they walk off. And then the last scene of the movie is, of course, the beach scene where the briefcase is washed up on the beach. And then this little boy, apparently, it was a boy and his daddy. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't see the father. But this little boy discovers a cat oh, and we're like, "Oh, kitty cat." Yep, and then it's like freeze frame. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Fucking freeze right on that cat. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh man. What a piece of shit, huh? <laughs> what would you think, David? <laughs> this movie's fucking awful. Um it's it's just so bad like the script is ridiculous um you've got you know good good actors like george kennedy uh clue gulliger uh mm-hmm. i'm not too familiar with alex cord but i'm gonna assume he's a good actor he was he, i mean well well known enough that uh he was but the script is so bad that they all come across as terrible actors particularly george kennedy he's awful in this movie oh like every line he speaks it looks like he's just he, like he just read it like, yeah and that's probably what happened he's like yeah you want to give me Twenty five thousand dollars for your movie? All right, I'm pretty sure that's probably what. I- the uh, <laughs> the Alex Cord guy actually he's not that bad. He's a he makes a pretty good bad guy. He reminded me yeah, of yeah uh, he's kind of slimy. He reminded me of Bernie in Weekend at Bernie's. Bernie or you know who else he reminds me of? Uh, Die Hard, not Alan Rickman, the the slimy guy who's like oh I'll yeah, take the, care the, of the this. coworker guy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bubby the co- baby that guy yeah <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um but uh, yeah the 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 story the story also is ridiculous like a cat on a boat like <laughs> they couldn't think of some other kind of monster like the the the, the monster is a cat that lives inside of another cat it's like it's like this guy who wrote it this uh graden whatever the fuck what was his name i said enough graden uh, clark. clark it's a graden clark film graden clark's uninvited um, he's going to be uninvited, uninvited to anything from now on. <laughs> um, but uh, it's like he hated cats and he's like, fuck cats. I also hate boats. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna I, write I, it. This gives me an idea for a movie. Yep. It just doesn't make any sense. And then like all no. the characters, no one's likable. Uh, everyone makes bad decisions. All the guys are perverts. Like, uh, and even if for like a cheesy kind of movie, it's not even good in that sense because like the like even like the, there's like a love scene like is the most pg-13 love scene i've ever seen in my life yeah and that's when the fucking i think the movie i think it is pg-13 it is pg-13 okay well, i'll give it some i'll forgive it then because if, if this was an r-rated movie it's like the worst r-rated movie ever <laughs> i know we didn't we didn't see any boobs no nothing <laughs> a lot of teasing uh but no this movie sucks uh, i will never watch this movie ever again uh i'm gonna go I'm going to go half, I think. I was torn between a half and a one. I think I'm going to go low. I'm going to go half. <laughs> well, I was torn between zero and half. I'm going to go half. I, I'm going to go half. So overall, it's half of Pamela Voorhees head. Now, the reason why I went half and not zero is because I actually quite enjoyed the cat. Uh, yeah, all the um, cat scenes were fun. The cat scenes. Other yeah. than the water phone music. But like, yeah, every time the, <laughs> the, the cat popped out of the cat's mouth. Yeah, this uh, movie would, sucks. Laugh. This movie sucks on so many levels, and David, you hit all of them pretty much. Um, 
but there is kind of a little bit of a charm to the cat coming out of the cat's mouth that I <laughs> that I kind of liked. Uh, the the cheesy like practical effects that were those puppets, and that's why I was like, I bet you Beekler did this. But even Beekler was probably like, I'm not doing this shit movie. <laughs> and that guy did a lot of shit movies. Um, it's awful. It's bad. I want to know when the cat comes out of the cat's mouth. What happens to the other cat? Like, is it just, it just like a skin there. suit? Is it just? Is it yeah, like a rug? A, yeah. Okay. Like so, Poor the other kitty. cat is like the the inner cat. It's, it's like his clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I don't <laughs> okay. know, David. I didn't fucking write this movie. Where's, <laughs> it's where's ridiculous. This fucker that wrote this. Is he still alive? Clark. I'm gonna fucking find him. Hold on. Let's see. <laughs> you still alive, Graydon? He is still alive. Get him on the horn. <laughs> Let's call this guy. What's the last thing he did? He did a movie. A movie? I don't know. Mm-hmm. He did a TV show, 1997, Mike Hammer, Private Eye, with Stacey Keach. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, he did a movie in 89, right after this, called Skinheads. Oh, that sounds really good. <laughs> um, it's his third film to deal with racial themes. Ah, Sounds like a sounds like an asshole. <laughs> but yeah, this that Mike Hammer is, thing that uh, was that awful. was a TV show. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, but no, I uh, I shan't uh, be watching this film again. I will never watch it again. No, I won't even recommend it. But if you do want to watch it, uh, how did you watch it? I watched it on I watched it on Tubi. Yeah, I think it was Tubi. Yep. Yeah, so you have to watch it for free. Get some commercials. You're gonna need them. <laughs> yeah, you need always to, like the commercials. You're gonna, want, you're gonna because, want some breaks. Yep. So you can actually. For this is the type of movie that I just went up and got to, went to the bathroom. I didn't even like. Yeah, you <laughs> took a full on shit during the movie. Missed nothing. <laughs> so uh, that's that. That's uninvited. Thank you, Christy, for recommending this. I guess tis the season <laughs> to shit on your favorite podcast. If we are your favorite podcast, like, maybe we're her least favorite podcast, and she's like, you know us. what? Fuck these guys. <laughs> Putting lumps of coal in our stocking. Yep. They were really bad this year. <laughs> if you have any, uh, I told you at the beginning of the episode, if you wanted to recommend movies to us or if you have anything that you do want to say to us, you can reach out to us through our social medias, and those are as follows yeah, Twitter, Facebook, the Slasher app, TikTok, YouTube, search The Swearwolves. Uh, on Instagram, search The Swearwolves Podcast. You go to our website, theswearwolves.com. You can email us at contact at theswearwolves.com or you can leave us a voicemail at 623 282 1851. So for The Swearwolves this week, I'm Brett. I'm David. And I'm going to go climb inside of David's mouth. I'm going to let him. I feel like I've got a fart that just is kind of hanging in there, you know? Dude, I farted earlier and it was like, I was sitting in this chair and uh, it was like (laughs) (laughs) a a little bit of a trumpet. Yeah. It was just like a, (laughs) it's like played, it like played notes, played notes. Those are the best. The ones that are like melodic. You're talking about your, your uh, tonal uh, farts, your melodic Mm -hmm. farting Mm -hmm. one time. No lie. I farted a chord. I don't know how I did it, but it was like two tones at once. It was amazing. Do you ever, like when you're sitting, that's, that is amazing. I wish you could have recorded that. <laughs> Me you too. You could have like, like how did sampled that, that. Amazing. <laughs> sampled that, put that in a song. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever sit in your chair and you fart and the bubble comes up the front? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like past like, your balls? And it feels funny. <laughs> it's like, yep. how did that happen? And yeah. why is there like an actual bubble? It's like a, it's like a. <laughs> yeah, there needs to be a documentary about this, like uh, where like a thermal camera or something follows the yeah. path. They should just turn a turn on thermal cameras that detect farts and just put it like out in the streets, so we could see like who's farting, because you could probably see it. Dude, I've always been curious. Well, now you'll have to try this because uh, you're in a colder climate now. I've always been curious, like if you can, like how you see your breath. Yeah, if you could, if you pulled your pants down, drop trowel. I'm not. F- I'm not going fart? outside, pulling my pants down and farting in sub freezing. <laughs> I would totally do that. Well, you can come. You visit. owe it to science. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. Fuck science. What has it ever done for me? <laughs>